Microsoft 365 Copilot notebooks, are they any good? They've just come out. I'm going to explore them for a bit and just you know, see and determine whether I think it's going to fit some of my needs. But in my early um, tests and checking things out, I think, I think it's okay. What are Copilot notebooks? They are Microsoft's answer to the LLM um, notebooks or notebook LM rather by Google. Uh, and a way of collecting and keeping things together that you are researching, asking about, and investigating. We've had chats within Microsoft 365 Copilot for a little while. Uh, this is about collecting those together with our sources, our resources, various links, pulling them together so that we can ask questions about those sources um, and get some answers. So how do you use them? Well, the M365 Copilot homepage uh, has a notebook section. Apparently, I think at the moment, you need to have a Microsoft 365 Copilot license to use notebooks. I'm not sure whether it's going to be made available for free, but we'll see. Uh, so we're in that notebook, and how do you create a new notebook? Well, we'll start by this, we'll give it a name. This would be research on something, and then you can pick from recent files uh, or search for files that you know of. Uh, and we'll explore some of these other options later too, but we create the notebook and better to show you a notebook that's already um, underway. So we'll open that up. Now, as I've created this notebook, one of the things that you could do to help get good results is start off by giving the notebook some instructions. Now, the reason I think about that to begin with is that you can help to frame up the kinds of information and the way that you want Copilot to respond. Uh, so think of it as you can tell Copilot about who you are, your role, what you're trying to achieve, uh, maybe the kinds of ways that you want responses to be given to you. And so this actually might even help your thinking process as you're trying to put together your notebook and the purpose of what you're trying to achieve. So we've got some instructions there. Um, when I created this, uh, initially I picked out some documents or files that uh, I felt were related to my topic, which is about training a training program for personal productivity, and I've focused in on note-taking methods at the moment. My list of references are, um, you've got filters to show the kinds of references that you have. Uh, so this is a collection of links. Uh, there are co-pilot pages, uh, some that I have uh, created from other chats and I've brought them in, and then a co-pilot page that I've actually created within the notebook. Now these uh, pages or page icons, they are loop pages, and so some of these Copilot pages and loops that I've connected to are just, just there in the list uh, and using a different icon. Um, I also have a Word document that I've linked in there and we'll add some other references as we go. Chats. So these are the chats that I've already asked about my content within the notebook. Uh, so that could be uh, useful to go back and see what were some of the things I've been um, working on and, and trying to get some results or some analysis or insights from all the sources that I've pulled together or references. So let's uh, have a look at, first of all, adding a reference. We, we did see that when we're starting to create a new notebook, um, but I like this that it's showing me recent files. So if it's something that I've been working on recently, it's right there. It's easy for me to just grab and use. Uh, so one of those being that I've been compiling some note-taking methods and I've even looked to create a presentation on it just as a draft and it might uh, be helpful too. So as I'm selecting those references, they're right there and listed. Um, I can click on files. Okay, now that's the only option at the moment. I think that might be just hinting at a, a future different choices for different kinds of references. Um, but there's something else here that's quite useful too and it's quite subtle. Um, so this you would think is just, oh look, I'm searching using my OneDrive, uh, but if you click on the link, you actually get that full OneDrive picker. And the good thing about this is that if you've become familiar with the picker, then that means that you're able to 
traverse the different things that you're already working on. Here's all my recent files. So a more richer list than just the one that we saw earlier. Um, I can go straight into my OneDrive as well and get into the depths of those. I can look at files that have been shared with me. Um, and so I can pick those out as well. So I know those aren't related, but I could select that file and um, add that to my references. If I have attended a meeting recently, then I could even delve into something here and pick out a file that has been shared with the meeting, whether it be before, during, or after. Uh, but one of the other things that really makes it easy uh, to try and find a file that might not be recent is that we can go through and traverse the different sites or Microsoft Teams from our quick access menu. So I can go into uh, the team that I've created for developing courses. I can look at the Collaborate With Yourself course, go into my research, and uh, I can see the different documents there. So you know, I've already chosen those in the list, but you can see how it's quite useful. Again, like with Quick Access and, and other places, you can go to more places and um, have a full look at the different sources that are available. So let's just add those different um, references. Something I've sort of took, taken a closer look in, in these early stages, uh, there's, there's this uh, reference type that I can use called a, a link. And as you go through to that, um, it gives a suggestion really that you could take a link to anything and you know give it some display text so that it looks nice in the list. But um, that copilot could go out and search that link and the content from the link and ask uh, or answer questions from it. And one thing about that, um, let's just show you something here. So Cal Newport uh, is a good source of info about deep ways of working and taking notes and the like. So I thought, well, maybe I'll just grab that link and use that as a reference. So we'll drop that in here. And uh, funny enough, uh, it mentions that you can't use a web URL as a reference, that it's, it's only for links to other types of things within the M365 environment. The funny thing about this here, if I just go back, I did actually fudge my way through. And when I um, added this reference, I went to link, I got ready to hit the add button. So watch, it'll be just briefly there for a moment. Um, well, it was there earlier. I managed to click the add button just before it turned gray. And a uh, funny thing is that it's, it's right there as a resource. And you know, what does that mean? Well, the expectation here is that I'd be able to search the site. Uh, and as long as that site has content that is readable, visible, um, it's a regular web page, then maybe it's a bit like using the web as a source. Anyway, we'll just see if that develops uh, over time too. Uh, now that I've added other resources, uh, like a PowerPoint, I start to see other filters there, so this is good too. Uh, in any of these references, I can just click to open as well and just take a look at the, the full um, set of notes as well. So that is helpful. Okay, so we've got our references, we've pulled those together. We've also got chats. And so this is where I have had conversations with Copilot inside this notebook about the sources and references here already. Um, and so, you know, tried this last week, uh, just messing about and of course I've uh, just tried one recently too just to to see um, can I answer any questions about that web link um, that I had added um, earlier. So these chats of course they are just like regular prompts you can ask a question about the notebook and um, the things that are popping up here are, are autocompletes from Microsoft Edge so just just ignore those I believe um, but the idea being that when I am prompting here Copilot will be answering questions on just the sources within this notebook. Uh, let's just say um, what uh, note taking methods are best for product development. And see what we come out with there. Now, it is meant to be focusing in on 
the content within the, the notebook, um, and it looks like it is, uh, just based on the content that I do have in there. Um, and just as a glance, let me just go back up the top here. I reviewed multiple sources from your notebook that explore. Uh, here's a synthesis of the most relevant approaches. So that is a chat within the notebook. It's focused in on the content within the notebook. It doesn't give me, I guess, an option to go outside the notebook and find content from the web. The whole purpose here is to gather your references and ask questions about it. And that maybe, hopefully, you'll be able to add web links at some point to, um, I guess I'll have to um, meet certain requirements to be able to be searched. I mean, you can't have just a, a notebook like, or rather a web link like this, which is just a web page with a video and some text, but nothing really there of substance to answer questions about, as an example. Now comparing this uh, prompt inside my notebook to the one that I asked uh, within Copilot chat. All right, so here's the a example of a prompt that I asked within just regular Copilot, Microsoft 365 Copilot chat. Uh, I was using the work switch. Again, it was about uh, what does Cal Newport say about note-taking methods and deep work. Uh, so it is using um, both enterprise and public sources. So that's your difference here, is that if you're using regular chat, then it's going to go to your work plus web sources if you've included that. Uh, and it has come up with some uh, various different suggestions. I did put that out to a um, co-pilot page. I saved it as a co-pilot page. So I did like what was there and I thought, well, maybe that's one way that I could bring that into my notebook. Um, so if we go back to our notebook and back in here, then it could be added as a reference. Let's just go in and grab that note-taking page there. All right, so that is a Copilot chat, <laughs> Copilot page from my M365 Copilot chat that I've brought from outside of my notebook. It's now in my notebook. Now, maybe it's not very clear, I didn't sort of show it very well, but I'll just sort of go through that again. You can, from your other chats outside of the notebook, you might come across something that's interesting and related to what you're using your notebook for. So you bring it in, um, you rather you save your results to the Copilot page, and then you can bring it in as a source. So if I launch that now, then uh, that's going to open the Copilot page apparently. Let's refresh that. Maybe not. Oh well, um, we could be seeing some things happening and changing in the background as the service is always changing. But uh, it is certainly a way of uh, working with that content. Um, so back into chats that I have had within the notebook. Uh, one that I had here where I asked about the, the link that I managed to add, which was a web resource. If I go right up to the top here, can you answer questions using the reference? And I did put it in quotes to make sure that Copilot understands that's the one I'm referencing. Uh, so it did take a look at it. Um, it is taking a look also at other things within my notebook. So I like this. It is. I've got a, uh, a loop page or a co-pilot page that is um, looking at email triaging methods um, and it's also bringing together some of the other bits that it knows about deep work from my content that I have created. So what was a good follow on question for this? Tell me more about a specific article uh, that, um, that uh, was on that page. Uh, so what I did do was I asked about uh, this article, yeah, it's still selected because I copied and pasted it. Um, so hoping that the copilot, um, that the copilot within the notebook could reach out through that link 
and then try and go deeper into that that article. That's my expectation around links, but um, we'll see how that goes. So it did go through and take a look at some of the content within that article, and then it also looked for that relevance within the other things that I'm looking at within my notebook, notebook themes, uh, looking at deep work philosophy and that context switching, which um, that context switching, uh, it does have that reference there that it's a, a Word document that I pulled together with some of the content about context switching. Effects of content switch, context switching. So um, really interesting to see how it's, it's gathering and responding to all of these things based on the references that I've put within my notebook. Uh, there was a follow-on question, uh, a follow-on prompt that I quite like because it understood that I'm trying to create some courses around personal productivity. So it suggested how can I integrate new, uh, Newport's ideas into a training module and gave me some good suggestions, some of his key topics that he talks about um, and suggestions around um, even activities. So I quite like that activity. Ask the learners to reflect on when they've worked like ChatGPT re reactively without depth <laughs> and when they've worked like a deep thinker. So there's you know, good things to, to consider here within the notebook. A little bit again around just away from the content but back into navigating around it. As I'm deep into a chat within the notebook, um, this is the name of the chat up here. If I click on the breadcrumb, then I get this nice drop down menu which allows me to navigate to other pieces of content within the notebook. Uh, if I was to click this, it'll take me back to the top of the notebook. I can go back to some of my chats or to all chats and um, I'm kind of expected to be able to go all references as well. Bit of feedback there for the team if you're listening. <laughs> well, uh, let's just try this one out, all chats. So that takes me back to the, the chats category as expected and um, yeah that reference is one I would expect to, to be taken back here. So is it any good? Um, I think I need to use this a bit more like many of us uh, it's a bit kind of early to say because um, it's one thing to do all these sorts of things in demo and go "Ooh, ah look at this look at what it's done but I think it's important to actually truly evaluate what it's coming back with um, does this, this content make sense? Is it really pulling stuff from Cal Newport's website? Uh, is it bringing together truly some of the stuff that I've been uh, pulling out of other Copilot chats or documents that I've created, uh, presentations that I might have put together? Um, look, the thing that I want to say here too, you know, if we are rushing away at this and using Copilot to help us save time, um, without actually looking at the content, how do we know that it is truly responding to the content in our notebook? We've got to have some familiarity with the content in the notebook, don't we? I think that's important to, to keep in mind. Uh, so there's still some responsibility on us to actually look at the content and think through it, evaluate it, critically think about it. Is it any good? Keep that in your mind as you are looking at any kind of content that comes out of Microsoft 365 Copilot or any particular LLM driven chat for that matter. That's enough, covered a lot. Yeah, how long we've been recording? Long enough. Uh, hopefully that has been helpful and honest uh, look. Is it any good, this Copilot notebook um, within our new M365 Copilot experience? I'm sure there'll be more details as time goes on probably should have said this at the beginning of the video, any of this kind of stuff, if you're watching this two years later and you're commenting on my video and saying that's not the right experience or we'll have the answers by then hopefully. <laughs> Thanks anyway for tuning in and um, yeah, we'll keep looking at these things, right? See you again soon. Bye for now.